In the last video, we looked at creating our own custom data types using structs or structures. In this video, we'll look at another way of creating our custom data types called classes. And if you've had any familiarity with object-oriented programming, you've probably seen classes before. Classes in Swift are very similar to structs. Uh, this here is the struct that we created last time of a student. And to see how some of they are, I'm actually just gonna change this to class. So instead of a struct, I'll make it a class. And for the most part, it's the same, except for this one error, error here. We don't use the word mutating in a class. So if I get rid of that, essentially we have created a functional class. In most cases, you'll want to use structs when you can, unless you need the functionality that classes brings you. And we're gonna talk about that functionality uh, in today's video. So just let me just change this back to struct and this back to mutating. And I'm gonna open a new playground or a blank playground here. So let's create a very simple class. I'm gonna create a very generic class and I'm gonna call it person. And I'm gonna give this person a name and that name is gonna be of type string. I'm gonna make another variable called lives on planet. I'll come back to this in a bit. I'll call it earth. Yeah, that's not a very useful property. And I immediately get an error that says class person has no initializers. And this is another difference between structs and classes. Remember when we talked about structs and we had uh, instance variables, we talked about the idea of a member wise initializer that structs were created automatically for you. So if I had a number of uh, variables, let me go back to here, like if I had variable you know, name and grade, I did not necessarily need to create an initializer like we have here. If I initialized all the variables when I created the struct, then Swift would create this memberwise initializer for me and I didn't have to put this in. With classes, you do need to put it in. So I actually do need to create an initializer for any uninitialized variables. So in this case, I'll need to do an init name and then string. And then I'll do self.name, which refers to this instance here, equals name, which refers to the parameter being passed. And again, I can make them different, but it's customary to make them the same. And then I'll just create a class method. I'll call it greeting. I will return a string. And I'll say return name says hello. So for the most part, there's nothing really new here. Did I forget something? Ah, yeah, I didn't really need that parentheses. So there's nothing new. Uh, these are things we've seen before in structs other than the idea of I need to create this initializer for any uninitialized properties. Let's go ahead and just see that I can create a new student. I'll say um, Sally equals student and the name, oh sorry, it's person. Uh, I'll give it a name. We'll just call it Sally. And then I can do sally.greeting. I should probably print that. And if I run it, Sally says hello, which is the greeting. So that part works. I can also print uh, Sally. lives on planet. If I run that, I get back Earth. So again, we haven't seen anything different than we've seen in structs. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this for right now. Now, the, the one of the most powerful pieces of classes is the idea of what's called inheritance. And inheritance refers to my ability to make what are called subclasses of a class. And so, for example, I could make a class student and a student is a person it's just more it has 
more specific properties. So I can say a student is a subclass of person. And the neat thing is student inherits anything a person can do. So all the properties and methods in person a student can do, and I can also extend that functionality. So for example, a student might have the idea of a grade. That they might be in a certain grade. And again, you see I have no initializers, and I need to make my grade an int. So I need to initialize my student. So let's go ahead and create an initializer for this student. I'll type in it, and I need the name of the student when I create it, and I'll also need the grade. Notice that name appears here, but it doesn't appear here. That's because name is being inherited from person, and I don't have to type it again here. So then how do I initialize the name? Well, first of all, let's do the grade. So self.grade equals grade. Notice I'm getting super init isn't called on all paths, which means I have an initialized name which comes from my super class. So we can say that person is the super class, student is the subclass, or student inherits from person. So in order to initialize the name for the student, I have to call the initializer of my person class. So the way I do that is to put super and then init, and then it's asking for the name, and it's the name that I passed. So this name is the parameter of my superclass initializer. This name is the parameter I passed when I create a student. Notice I don't have to type greeting again. It is inherited from my person class. So let's create uh, another, we'll call it Sally again. This time we'll say student, and I need a name and a grade. So the name will be Sally, and the grade will be ninth. So if I do Sal, let's do print, print Sally dot greeting. Notice Sally says hello. So I, I didn't type it in student, it's inherited from person. I can also do uh, print Sally lives on planet and it knows Earth. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this for right now since we're done with that for a bit. So we have seen how we can create a subclass of another class. We can actually take a subclass of a subclass. So I can make a subclass of student. I can be, you want to be more specific, so I'll make a class upper school student and make it a subclass of student. As an aside, understand that you can have multiple subclasses of a particular class. So I could create a middle school student, that was a subclass of student. I could create a lower school student, that's also a subclass of student. So you can have multiple subclasses of a certain class. So what I'll do for this subclass, I'm just going to create a computed property that tells the name of the grade I'm in, like freshman, sophomore, junior. So I'll do var class string, and I'll make it a string. And since this is a computed property, I'm going to put some logic in here. I'm going to switch on the grade. So if the grade is 9, I'm going to return freshman. If the grade is 10, I'll return sophomore. And so on. Whoops, 11. And case 12, return senior. And since I always need a default case, I'll put a default. 
I'll return unknown. And that should be it for my upper school student class. Because I inherit the name and grade from student, I do not need to create a separate initializer for upper school student. So let's go ahead and create, so I'll do um, var Brian equals upper school student. Notice how it, it knows that I'm inheriting from student, so it gives me the initializer. And I'll say Brian, oops, whoa. Brian and grade 12. So if I do print Brian dot class string, it shows senior. So that computed property is working. There may be times when I want to make certain methods in my class or subclass more specific. For example, I might want my greeting method for an upper school student to give the name of the class I'm in. In those cases, you can override the method in the superclass. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to, after here, I'm going to use the keyword override and the function greeting. And again, it has the same signature so, uh, as this subclass, so it has the same um, return type. And I just need to return. What I wanted to do is I wanted to return the person's name and have them say hello. So I want this part the same, but then I want to add um, what the name of their grade is. To make it simple, I can return the super greeting, which is going to return this part. Okay, so it's going to call this method. So I don't have to type that all again. And then I'm going to add to it and is a class string. So I'm overriding the greeting for my super class. So now if I do print brian.greeting, run that, I get Brian says hello and is a senior. So it's overriding that functionality, which is pretty neat. So this has been a very quick demonstration of classes, but hopefully you can see how powerful they are. By creating subclasses, you can create more specific examples of what you're trying to do. Uh, and it, it adds a lot of flexibility. Again, if you don't need that flexibility, it may be easier just to stick with structs when you're creating your custom data types. Uh, one other difference to mention between classes and structs is when you will make a copy of a class. So for example, if I do Sally equals, whoops, let me just create a variable. There, Sally equals Brian. So I'm creating a copy of the Brian class uh, and naming it Sally. So if I do print Sally.greeting, it gives me the exact same greeting because it's a copy. Let's go ahead and change the name of that. So if I do sally.name equals sally. So let's go ahead and print sally. Actually, let's do the greeting again. Sally.greeting. Oops, need a Y. There we go. Let's run that. And you see the name has changed. Well, let's go ahead and print Brian.greeting. Remember, Brian was my original uh, instance of upper school student. Let's print that. Well, it says Sally too. So what's happened is when classes are created, classes are stored in memory. If I create a copy of it, I'm just creating a, a pointer to that location in memory. So any change I make to a copy changes the original one as well. I'm just changing the one class. Structs, however, when you copy them, copies of all the different instant variables are made. So when I change one, it does not change the other. So that's a key thing to keep in mind uh, when you're working with classes and structures. So that was a very 
brief look at classes. Hopefully you've had a chance to, to work with classes in other languages. In the next video, we'll start looking at collections, which in Swift include arrays and dictionaries.